In the event that a point distribution has a weight associated with it, then we should be using the weighted mean center to calculate the center of the weighted locations. Here again, this is a simple, a a simple analog to the weighted center in the, of a spatial data. All we are going to do is use the weights to come up with a weighted mean of the x coordinates and a weighted mean of the y coordinates. We're going to calculate the x and y component of the weighted center and save that as a new point which is going to be the weighted mean center. Here's an example of a shift. I've colored the dots on the right hand side based on the weight that we've measured at each of those locations. On the left hand side we have no weights so all the points are the same size. As you see if we increase the weight of these two points in the bottom right hand corner we see a shift of the mean center which was about over here in this image down towards the, the locations of the higher weight. So, for example, if each of these represents one cholera case, but these over here represent five and ten cholera cases, and you were asked to describe where is the mean center of the cholera cases, well, you would know that the best representative point is somehow going to take into consideration the fact that there are five and ten cholera counts over here, whereas each of these is only one point. So here's an example where we have to calculate the mean center. It's quite easy. The first step, uh, well I think I have a better table on the next slide. Okay, so let me just describe this data very quickly. We've got one, two, three, four, five data points. For each data point we know their x-coordinate, their y-coordinate, and some weight, something that we've measured at that location. What we are going to do is first display that data in this plot. Here we have blue circles showing the locations of our five points, and in the red brackets we have the value of the weight at each location. Intuitively, we see, you know, some very low weights and some quite high weights. So we know that while the mean center, uh, the, 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 the weighted mean center is going to be pulled towards the 5, the 8, and the 4, more so than it will be pulled towards the 2 or the 1. Let's calculate the weighted mean center. The first step is to calculate weighted x and weighted y. So weighted x is simply the x times the weight. So we've got 0, 24, 10, 28, and 9. The weighted y is simply the weight times the y. So we've got 30, 16, 6, 4, and 4. Next we have to add up these two columns in order to build the numerators of these equations. So the sum of Wx is the sum of this column. So we've got 24 and 10 is 34. 54 plus 8 is 62. And 9 is 71. And the weight of this column is 46. 52 plus 8 is 60. The denominator in both cases is the same, the sum of the weights. That's the sum of this column. So 13, 14, 15, and 5 is 20. So we have the weighted centroid in the x dimension is 71 over 20, and the weighted centroid in the y dimension is 60 over 20, which equals 3. This is equal to about three and a half. I'll put a squiggly there because it's not quite equal, just about equal. So here we have the original data points 
I'm showing you the location of the original mean center over here when you don't take into consideration the weights. And when you have the weights, you see that the mean center is being pulled over here to this location at 3.5 and 3. Why is it being pulled in that direction? The simplest answer is that it's being pulled towards the locations that have the highest weight. So we see that the 8 and the 5 are to the left, and that corresponds to the biggest pull of the data, uh, the, you know, the, the largest directional movement is in the leftward direction. In practical purposes, we can use the weighted mean center to track the location of the population over time. So in this case study, what we are looking at is the mean center of the U.S. population between 1790 and, to, and 2010. This is the location of the mean, the mean location of the U.S. population weighted by population size in 1790. And as you can see, with westward expansion of the population and the opening up of the west, we have a very consistent westward trend of migration of the mean center. This is another use of, of, of something very similar to the mean center. Here, the orange dots are the WECG, which is essentially the World Economic uh, Center. And what this is, is the, uh, the, uh, the, the GDP, the center of, the product, the center of economic production uh, of the globe. And what we see is a trace that starts about over here in the late 70s. Over there, back I mean, back in the late 70s, the two main economic powers were Europe and the United States, which is off to the left in this graph. So it makes quite a lot of sense that the center of economic clout in the world was located somewhere over Iceland, uh, a, a location that's partway between Europe and, and the United States. Now, what we've seen over time is the expansion of economic production, first in uh, primarily coming from the Asian countries. And with that expansion, we see a migration of the economic center of the world moving eastward around the polar ice caps closer and closer to Asia. 